This here is a new laptop from Chewy. It's called the MiniBook X. And why the MiniBook? Well, you can see it's very small. It has a 10.8 inch IPS screen, 10 touch points. It is a very good screen, but it has something unusual about it and that it's got a cutout. It in fact is the world's first laptop, according to Chewy, with a hole punch cutout in it. So with this model here, it has a 360 degree hinge, means that you can flip it right around. You can use it as a tablet in tent mode, presentation mode. You kind of got get the idea there. Now it does support this, a stylus, which is their high pen H7. The keyboard's backlit, small little touchpad on it, and the storage options you get with this, well, my model that it got sent from Chewy is a review unit here that has 512 gigabytes of storage and an unusual 12 gigabytes of RAM. LP DDR4X RAM, you don't normally see 12, but here it's two six gigabyte chips from Micron that are on the motherboard when I took a look at the internals. This video is sponsored by the all new Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 14 with 3K screen, 11th gen Intel Core i7, and optional RTX 3050 Ti graphics. And it can be configured with Linux or Windows, dual boot. See the link in the description for more info. The lid of the MiniBook X here is made out of a 6000 series alloy. It's a matte finish to it. Doesn't tend to pick up too many fingerprints. Pressing there, there's no flex on that lid at all. So it's not gonna be bending in and pressing up against the keyboard or anything like that, which is good. Now you notice here that the Chewy logo sticks out by about two millimeters, three millimeters that it protrudes. It's also made out of alloy. And I just wish they'd done something else or just keep it completely flush with the lid. On the right side of our 10.8 inch mini book here, we have a status LED that's just when it's charging. So it is green once fully charged. Now this port here supports only Chewy's charger. And then we do have a full spec type C port. Now this one supports power delivery, 45 watts. It does support 4K 60 output and then USB 3.1 data. This does support USB 3 data. Our power button, now I've got a minor little complaint with this power button that it kind of moves about in there a little bit. It almost, almost has a rattle to it. Status LED and you can just see the downwards firing speaker here. So this part, the outside, this here, is made out of plastic. The left side is rather bare. So we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support, a vent, but no, this is not fan cooled as you'll see when I take a look at the internals and then our speaker. So what's missing for me is a type A port, USB should be on this and why no micro SD card slot, Chewy? Come on, it should be there. Then the underside, we have an intake vent here, but there's no fan in this. It's passively cooled. So it looks like they might have plans to have a fan cooled, more powerful model, perhaps in the future, with that exit vent that we have here, but it's not used in this model. Four rubber feet and a bunch of screws that hold this metal plate on, which I'll take off now. We'll take a look at the internals. So there's some good and some bad here, but mostly bad. And that is that we don't have really any upgrades possible apart from our main boot drive. So the SATA 3 drive that's installed is right here, but we have a header there, but we don't actually have the M.2 socket there. It does say SATA on it. So this is another SATA 3 slot that could have possibly been there if Chewy had full bat with the component, of course, which is missing. Now there's a lot of copper in here, which is very good. So from here up to here, all of this, all of that plate there, solid copper there, which is good to see. And the build quality is very nice here inside. We've got a metal backing plate behind the keyboard. The hinge is screwed into place on into the metal there. The hinge feels very good. We have two antennas, one up here, one up here. And the wireless card, you can't upgrade it, unfortunately. Our battery, rather small, just two cells here, 28 watt hours. And I'll let you know towards the end of the review, what kind of battery life you can get out of it. But you probably already imagined with such a small battery and a high res screen, it's not that good. Just over four hours with my general kind of use in Chrome at about 30% brightness. So not amazing. You could probably stretch it out to six hours video only at a lower brightness. Two speakers right here too. So a bit disappointing the internals that we can't add another drive.
And then our screen. So this one, 360 degree hinge. It is a 10.8 inch screen IPS. It's probably from the MateBook. It is the same screen because it's got the same resolution. 2560 by 1600. And of course this right here. I'm not a fan of this, the cutout right here. So they've gone and used a tablet screen in a mini laptop here. And of course, yes, as they claim that it's the world's first laptop with a hole punch screen because no one else would probably want to do this. You can see the issue. Right where my folder is here, the Chewy folder, is blocked. Most of that is blocked. So really, to me, this, if they were going to do it, should be here. And then if they were going to do a hole punch anyway, you should just not do it and have just a normal camera up here in the top bezel if they could have squeezed that in. So the bottom bezel here is a little bit smaller than what would typically see. Bezels are not bad at all. Rounded edges and little rubber feet right here for when it's closed so it doesn't rub up against it. So it's fully laminated IPS. Brightness is excellent. In this panel, it is 480 nits. And our color reproduction is great. So 100% sRGB. They've gone with another very good screen when you look at the color coverage here. 88% NTSC. Adobe RGB is 90%. That is really good. And look at this for P3. 97%. So it is a good screen. Touch accuracy. Brilliant. Very good. Touch response. Great and it supports 10 touch points. It's a great screen, but this hole punch here, the cutout, yeah, I don't really like it. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. And of course, with the 360 degree hinge means it can be used as a tablet. It does have an accelerometer built in. As soon as you flip it around, it will disable the keyboard and it will auto rotate itself to whatever presentation you want to use. So presentation, can either be, sorry, holding it as portrait or landscape, it'll flip it around. So very good screen, and it's versatile with that 360 degree hinge, which by the way, does feel very, very good. The hinge on this is excellent. I've got no problems with it at all. Just like this keyboard, I think they've done a really good job, Chewy, considering it's just the 10.8 inch keyboard here. It's their typical keyboards, which I've really not been complaining about at all. They're quite good. So nice travel on them. Little bit of flex when I press down here in the middle. It is backlit. So that is the maximum level level currently. Then we've got the first and the second. So I flick the light off. You'll see how bright it is. So it is bright. It's clear. It's evenly distributed. Great backlight on this keyboard. So the top here, this palm rest, which is small, is plastic. Okay. The underside is metal. The hinge, metal. The lid of it, metal as well. So the touchpad here, while it is very, very small, it is a smooth finish to it, supports Windows 10 gestures, Windows 11 gestures, should I say, and finer movements, it does work really well. So I'm happy with the keyboard, the touchpad, and the screen, I think, are excellent on this. Now, one thing that Chewy does well with the BIOS is they just leave it completely unlocked to us, normally with most of their tech, and I like this, and I hope they keep this trend. So in the advanced tab here, there's one setting that we can adjust. I mean, there's, there's thousands of settings really in there, but don't really mess about with anything in there. But if you want to do this, if you want to run your RAM at 2.933 gigahertz instead of 2.4 gigahertz, you can do that. If you do this, go into the advanced, sorry, chipset tab. Okay, that's a chipset tab right here. System agent. Hit enter again to get into memory. Then go down here where it does say maximum frequency, which would be auto. You want to set 2,933, which I've already done. Set that. Then go to where it says SAGV. Disable that. And you can even go to DDR speed control and set that to manual. Those three adjustments means we can then run this RAM at you can see here, 2,933 megahertz instead of 2,400. The memory timings, yes, they are terrible, but that's just what it is with this tech. 
All right, so I've moved over to screen capture now because it's just a little bit easier here for me and I can show you a few things that are clearer. So we've got the system that is running across Windows 11. That's good to see and it has a digital license all activated, no problems. Now under display, just taking a quick look in here, you'll see that it is possible with the Type-C out to video here that you can run this, which I'm currently running, so 4K, and it is at 60 frames per second. If you go then into the advanced settings, you'll see that it's 8-bit and running at 60 frames per second. Now, with my LG CX that I have, it wants to actually output 120, but every time I try and select it, it ends up being all scrambled, so it crashes out. So it is just 4K 60 maximum with that, which is the spec, okay? It's not gonna be any better than that. In the device manager here, you'll notice that we've got a few things of interest I wanted to point out, and that is that the wireless AC chip that we cannot change or upgrade, part of the motherboard, is just the 3165. Now, I'm a bit disappointed in this. I think really Chewy should have gone with the Intel AX200 or 201. Wi-Fi 6 support, Wi-Fi AX would have been a lot better. Our processor here, so it is the Celeron, the N5100. Now, this one, it's got four cores. 2.8 gigahertz is the maximum turbo, 10 nanometer process now, and it has UHD graphics. So it's a step up from the previous Gemini Lake and a little bit better. And I'll just show you some rough benchmarks here that I have run just a couple of them. I won't go too overboard with this because it is a very low end chip. There's really no need. So OpenCL score here, this is the GPU's performance, low score, okay? And then Geekbench 5, here we have uh, 630 for the single core score, and then nearing up towards 1800 for multi-score, okay, which is all right. And the single core score, that's not a bad score there for 2.8 and this smaller kind of chip. Now our RAM, I'll just show you that, the details of it. Under Task Manager here, we can take a peek. We have 12 gigabytes of RAM, DDR4, originally configured to 2.4 gigahertz, and my little change in the BIOS, you can set it at the top speed that this particular chip, the Jasper Lake, wants to run at its maximum there. The timings are not great at all, they're quite bad. But having that 12 gigabytes of RAM, much better than what you typically see, which is eight gigabytes of RAM, so it does give us an additional bit more of RAM to play with, with multitasking, which is great. Then the stock SSD, this is SATA 3 spec, 512 gigabytes of storage, which is good. I, often we do see just 256, so 512, I'm all for that. And the speeds there for SATA 3, they're okay. Writes could be a little bit faster, but all up, it's not too bad. Video playback. So just like the other Jasper Lakes that I've been checking out, that these kind of files demanding HEVC, 4K, 140 megabits per second bit rate, and even higher can be played by the Jasper Lake here with the Iris UHD graphics. Not a problem. That's smooth. That's 30 frames per second. It does that typical when you open it up, the initial couple of frame dips. Sony Swordsmith file here, that's HDR, and this is also 60 frames per second, and it does run at the 60 frames per second. When you skip ahead, you see that's running smoothly, doesn't seem to be dropping any frames. So for video playback, these are very good, and a lot better than, say, the Raspberry Pi devices, which tend to choke under such demanding video playback. But here, because it's all native, handled by that UHD processor, the decoding, it's not a problem for it. Now, general computing on a spec such as this one with our Celeron 5100, you'll find that it's okay, right? So spreadsheets, documents, things like that, general workloads, it can handle it just fine, the quad core, although it's not a very powerful chip, it's only six watts that it's configured at here. It'll be fine for that. So when you scroll up and down, if you've got huge spreadsheets or documents, you will sometimes get a little bit of lag, so be prepared for that. But in general kind of use, it does feel quite quick and snappy and real no issues with huge amounts of lag or being bogged down. We only have, well, 12 gigabytes of RAM here. I was going to say eight. I'm so used to saying eight. What I'll do now is a bit of a search here in Google and just check on the performance, this little probe tab test here that I do that a lot of people like to run a lot of tabs. I know I do. I normally have about, oh, I, I have at least 20, 25 tabs open. So I'm just gonna keep control down here, click on these different pages, open them up, and there'll be a few videos in there. There normally is uh, when I search cats, and we'll see if this is going to end up bogging down completely, or will it just load in fine? So, so far the performance seems decent. It doesn't seem to be really bogging down at all. I just open up there some more images. So I've got about 10 tabs open. I probably need just a few more than that. So let's just search a couple of other things here. 
then open those up, move over into this. And when you swap between the tabs, it shouldn't really bog down. Now that RAM is going to be helping us out. I'll just bring up here our task manager. We can take a look at it. Now I won't edit this out so you can see that it's 100% performance there. It's under a bit of load there and I want to have this always on top. I'm just going to minimize it now. And we can take a look at that again. It's starting to feel a bit laggy now because it's got a lot to load up in the background, certainly there. And swapping over these tabs, still a few things loading in, but scrolling performance, that's not actually too bad. Even though, yes, the CPU is at 100% and I've still got quite a bit of RAM there free, I could even run, I'd say, double these, the amount of tabs I've currently got open. But look at that, swapping between those tabs, still performance seems good. But yes, it is being taxed quite a bit, that little quad-core chip there. With only the six watts there, that is definitely capping the performance here. Now you can go into the BIOS settings, increase that power limit to something like 10 if you want it to perform like this Celeron N5105, which is a 10 watt part, and we get similar performance there if you were to do that. But that's not bad. Now I found the pen doesn't seem to perform quite as well as what it did the high pen here with the free book from Chewy. But this one, that's I'm just using a very thick marker here at the moment. So when you press lightly, the harder you press, the thicker it should get. But the pressure sensitivity right now doesn't seem to be working as well as it normally does. I'm not seeing that getting that much thicker there, the line. So if I just write here, hello, and then world, you'll see what I mean, that it's a little bit laggy at times when you scribble. It's not bad. I mean, this bamboo paper is very light, this application. So anything heavy, I think you're going to experience a little bit more lag. So you can scribble and write, should I say, and draw right up into the corners. The good thing about this one here is the size, of course. So you can, you can just hold that up and then you'll be able to write on it. I'm just going to try that again. See, it's... Okay. It's a performing okay here. So for that, for sketching and things, I think it's okay, but I wouldn't go out of my way to grab this for the stylus performance. I do think that the free book from Chewy with the same work on pen does seem to perform a little bit snappier and quicker. There is definite lag I'm seeing at times with the stylus. All right, so here we are with Counter-Strike and the performance of the full server here not looking amazing because I've only got about 25 frames per second, especially with all those other players on screen. Yeah, that was just absolutely terrible. Oh, huge lags there. So you're going to get yourself killed and I'm just about to get killed here as well. Ah, oh, can't believe I didn't shoot that guy. Okay, well, I'm just using the touchpad. <laughs> I walk straight into a whole group of them. But anyway, it's not about my crappy gameplay. It's just to show you that it's not great. Even though we do have the 12 gigabytes of RAM and it is in dual channel, the problem is here that 6 watt power limit is restricting the performance of our graphics. And it shows with Counter-Strike, even on the lowest possible settings at 720p, it's simply not what I would classify as playable. Thermals and fan noise. So there is no fan noise with this system because it's passively cooled. It's just got that, all that copper in when I showed you the internals. Now we did trigger this, thermal throttling. Unfortunately, they've got it set quite low chewy. So it's capping out here at 79 degrees. That's after gaming, benchmarking, pushing it hard. It doesn't seem to ever go over 79 degrees Celsius, which is good. It gets a little warm on the underside, but only about 35 degrees or so, which is pretty standard considering that it's passively cooled here. So the heat is building up a little bit within it. So if we did have a 10 watt power limit with this, expect the thermals then to hit the 80s for sure. When you game, it would. But I do believe there's a bit of room here to increase those power limits if you want to try and tweak the performance up a little bit. When we looked at the internals, I showed you the speakers. So there's two of them downwards firing. They don't actually sound bad. So Chewy over the last couple of years has really improved on their speaker performance. So here is a sample of them at 100% volume. And then finally, our battery life. So it is disappointing. It's only a 28 watt hour battery. It should have been much larger in such a small, nice little laptop here that's got potential, but no, they kind of just limited us to around four hours, just over four hours of general kind of computing use with Chrome, streaming, YouTube, 
and a bit of Netflix through it, it's not that good at all. And of course it's a bright and a high resolution screen so it's gonna take a bit of a toll on it. The screen for me is one of the best things about it but it also has that cut out. Yeah, Chewy, why? You don't have to be the world's first if it's something bad like putting the world's first laptop with a cutout in it, no. It should either be up in the top bezel or just don't give us the cutout at all. I know the screen they've used here is probably, I'm very certain on this, a Mate Pad 10.8 inch screen. So it's nice, very good color coverage, great brightness, it's just, yeah, that cutout there. Keyboard, very good. For the size, it's a typical Chewy keyboard. It's a nice keyboard to type on, it's got very even backlighting, and good backlight levels too as well. Touchpad, while it is small, it actually works quite well, supports gestures, good accuracy. The overall general build is quite good. Then there's some very interesting design choices, not with just the cutout, but also why no type A port? Why did they put in Wi-Fi AC, not Wi-Fi AX? Why don't we have a secondary SSD support with this? It's simply missing there. It would have been nice to have that, of course. So it has potential, this design, this laptop. I mean, for general computing, it's okay, but really, I find it hard to recommend this one when we do have the Freebook X that I've reviewed from Chewy, which is basically a laptop just like this, same spec, but it's got only eight gigabytes of RAM where this has 12. However, it's got secondary SSD slot, which is good. And it does have a much more usable size. It doesn't have the cutout. 13.5 inches, and generally for me, I think it's a better machine with better battery life too as well there. It does have the Wacom Stylus Pen support too. So there we go, that's my review there of Chewy's MiniBook X. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye for now.